Hi, it's Mike again with Uptastic. I'm here again at the GoTo Conference in Chicago, 2013. I'm sitting down with Rich Hickey. Rich, uh, as you may know, is the creator of the Closure Programming Language. Uh, it's, a, it's a Lisp dialect on the JVM. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. I, it's a very busy conference, but so I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so you created Closure, and it was it was a, it, you released it to the Lisp mailing list. And yada, yada, yada. Eventually, there's user groups exploding, um, conferences being formed about people who are, are rabid fans of the language and the concepts and, and the ideas behind uh, underpinning the language. As somebody who's created this tool and then basically kind of released it to the world, what is it like, or what has your experience been creating this tool and then seeing? these uh, uh, various groups pop up when you didn't have a marketing team, you didn't have some evangelists out there uh, seeding money for user groups to pop up. What, what has that been like for you? Uh, well, it's been incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's quite surprising. You yeah. know, I think um, when I wrote Closure, I, I definitely uh, did it as uh, a personal satisfaction mm -hmm. project and and you know, being a new language and a Lisp, I did not expect very many people to be interested at all. Uh, but I think um, uh, Paul Graham's book and essays and uh, and uh, the success of Python and Ruby sort of seeded uh, people in their desire for new languages and, and for a Lisp that they could, you know, actually use for day-to-day -day work. Uh, so yeah, it was quite surprising. You know, I put out a message to uh, two dozen people, yeah, and um, it got you know put on Hacker News, and I got you know twenty thousand hits the first yeah. day. It was really something was some interest in the idea of it was already there before closure mm -hmm. was. I think. Well, and one of the things I find interesting is that it's built on a pretty stable, like the culture underneath Java and the JVM people around that. That's a pretty um, well-established community. Uh, it's not not too much exciting things going on, and people aren't rabidly well. Not so many rabid. I'm a Java developer. I mean, people identify as Java, but they're not as enthusiastic about it as they would say. I'm a well-versed Closure developer, mm. um, or even a Ruby developer. So I, I just think it's interesting that this the hottest language right now is built on this really incredibly. Um, Vanilla, <laughs> boring a platform. It, it, has that been s something uh, that that that's been you know a boon or a bust with working with uh, getting support for people on the JVM? Uh, I think it's quite critical to Closure's yeah. success that it's built on top of something that uh, is an industry standard and, and people are comfortable deploying in production. Um, it's one of the reasons why Closure was. Uh, it was possible for Closure to succeed was the fact that it was possible for people to use in production and use where at work, and uh, and I think that's what helped drive people's enthusiasm was that they they knew they had to work with the JVM and now here was something that let them do something new and yet uh, remain connected to what they had been doing as opposed to sort of drop everything and try something completely. So kind of kind of having that boring base allows you to have a little bit of excitement and, and, and yeah. know that, that the underpinnings are, are nice and solid and they're not gonna yeah I mean, well they're they're not they're not just boring they're yeah. also quite uh, well, capable yeah. and, uh, and and robust and and uh, well tested and, uh, and 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 there's a lot of leverage in mm -hmm. the libraries that exist there so uh, you know I, I wouldn't want to belittle Java and the JVM's role well, boring in closure wasn't necessarily uh, uh, a negative statement. Mm. It's 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 that the boring. I know I can get up and it's going to be working, right, and right. I don't have to worry about. Yes, not exciting in yeah. that. You know, you don't want to be excited, way. And but looking at another uh, language and group, the Ruby group, where you don't always know things are going to work. Um, you know, the, those. You know, the libraries are, are always under a lot of churn. Uh, you know, that's not necessarily the most stable community. 
But what I see with the closure community is that much like the Ruby community that just grew up and became this rabid, very much um, very passionate, very vocal um, uh, community, I, I see a, a kind of a mirroring in, in the closure community uh, where it seems like while closure is built on Java and it's, it's a very well uh, uh, strong foundation, the community that came up into Java doesn't seem to be, or I should say, the, the, the community that seems to have migrated most to Clojure actually seems to be more the Ruby community, at least from my observations. So the, the numbers actually say that most, um, I would say, you know, plural, plurality of Clojure programmers come from Java. Oh, really? Um, but there are um, certainly people coming from everywhere, um, you know, from Ruby and from mm -hmm. Python and from uh, uh, Scala and, and uh, but yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of people who are using Java. I mean, a lot of Java programmers are interested in other things. Right. And now this is this lets them pursue that. So, uh, uh, we yeah, we definitely get a lot of Java, Java programmers. Have you, have you um, gone to and participated in any user groups? Have you ever like uh, tried to go not as rich hickey, but just see how people are using or how they're talking about closure? Uh, uh, I mean, I've, I've gone to the gone to groups. I, I've always uh, given a talk, so I don't think mm -hmm. I've just been. An attendee too often. Sometimes at the New York group, I will uh, just be an attendee. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's so exciting to see what people are doing and mm -hmm. uh, and how big these groups are. And uh, I mean, now it's quite it's quite a lot going on. You know, we have now three conferences a year: East Coast and West Coast and Europe. And uh, the mailing list is gigantic. You know, it's uh, seven thousand plus people. And the IRC is full of you know helpful people and very very active and. Uh, I think the community has been great. There are, there are people who are looking to help other people succeed, mm -hmm. and uh, that's just fed itself. Right. Well, and even very interesting uh, projects, and, and the reason I, I'm probably I have probably have a, a Ruby bias, and I've probably the reason I probably see more people from the Ruby community going to Clojure is because of just um, uh, my local mm -hmm. what, what I see, and I've mostly interacted with Ruby. And it, I was just inferring though that more it seemed like. Uh, a lot of the developers I know who've been doing Ruby are kind of bored with Ruby, or they're starting to see cracks in Ruby's methodologies and how it's implemented, and, and they're starting to see some of the limitations, and they're looking at Clojure as being an answer to that. Is is there any is there any truth in that? I mean, I've heard that you're you're a vocal critic of Ruby, the language. Uh, okay, then that's. That's no, I, I couldn't be because I, I really don't have very much experience with Ruby at all. Okay. So, uh, I do see people migrating uh, from Ruby, uh, and you know they have their own stories about why they've done that. But I would let them speak for themselves uh, about that. Okay. Uh, and uh, and um, <clears throat> with with looking at the way the groups are are forming, is there starting to be any? Um, I mean, can you actually, what I'd like to ask is, how do you receive feedback from the community? Do you have kind of like uh, the Linux model, the, the Linux model where it's, you're the benevolent dictator and you decide how new features are brought in, or do you solicit feedback from the users? How do you go about working with the, the people who are out there using it and espousing uh, a closure? Yeah, so it is a benevolent dictator model, okay. uh, uh, but there are there are the mailing lists. Mm -hmm. um, there's the big list, which is sort of everybody, and then there's the developers list, which is somewhat smaller and more focused on um, moving forward and uh, implementing patches and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a more active group, and uh, that's the primary feedback mechanism. And then there's a you know there's a Jira, and people can issue bug reports and enhancement requests, and we tend that. Uh, so that's the that's the process there. Um. Now I, I I'm curious is in the uh, the conferences when you when you're when you're uh, do you do you go through the Apple model of trying to hold back big releases until right before a conference or or is it just new releases come out on a uh, on a regular cycle, they come out on a regular cycle. I mean, if we're if we're close to one before a conference, we try to get it done. I mean, we yeah. we rarely have it done and then wait, but uh, mm -hmm. we will often try to get something out beforehand so, so that people will have it to talk about and 
uh, but n and it's not coordinated with them specifically. Okay, and with with dealing with community, what what has been surprising? I mean, when you launch it, I'm sure I I, I don't think you expected there to be conferences and user groups popping up for the language. But what is, you know, aside from that, what has been the most surprising aspect of, of the way people have uh, started adopting and, and, and espousing? I think culture? it's just the, the size of it has been surprising. Mm -hmm. you, uh, it's got everything against it, right? It's a list, it's functional, um, and uh, being on the platform it's on, it's dynamic, which is sort of not in keeping with the, the other entrants there. Um, and so just the quantity of people that are interested has really been uh, astounding. I mean, the groups are huge now, and uh, they're all over the world. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's been the biggest surprise. Uh, I think I, I was super concerned about the tone of the community from the very beginning, that it be positive, okay. because, you know, there had been other LISP communities that had struggled with that. and. Uh, and I think that had been a barrier to adoption, and I wanted to make sure that um, Closure had a, a clean slate there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the thing that's been really satisfying has been to see um, the entire community um, propel that forward. Because after a certain point, as one person, you can't you know, manage that. It has to be sort of in the fabric of the community. And I think um, a positive attitude is uh, is in the fabric of the community, and that just you know helps reinforce itself. Has it has it, and, and this is more of a question of becoming the center of this kind of uh, list revolution, for lack of a better term. Is that uh, is that impacted you? Like I know, or I would see certain individuals that when they go to a conference, they may have gone from being just that person in in, in the audience to now they're a center of attention and they're having to deal with that. And I just wonder if that's something that's impacted your ability to move in, in, in te technical circles without being um, like a center point that people like, oh, there's your chicky, and then they kind of pounce on you. Has that been something that you've had to, to deal with or has it been something that's, that uh, has either been a positive or a negative thing that you've had to well, I mean, there's no, there's no denying that what happened with closure has changed, you know, my life. I right. was, you know, I wasn't a public uh, figure before closure, and uh, and now, um, you know, there's all this, all this attention to closure and the ability to, you know, speak at conferences and things like that. You know, I've tried to use that as an opportunity to talk about the ideas behind closure and, you know, not really to sell it, but um, mm -hmm. to talk about what it's about because I think those things were important to me in, in, in making it. Uh, but no, it's it's mostly opportunity. It's certainly, yeah. you know, I don't feel like people are passing on me yeah. or anything else. I mean, I, I really enjoy meeting people and uh, mm -hmm. being part of the uh, the conferences has let me meet a lot of great people and a lot of great speakers and uh, learn a ton from other people. So uh, that's, it's just been great. Yeah. Uh, Do you see, uh, Do you see the, the closure, like I, like I was saying, the Lisp revolution, do you think that uh, closure has a, a long way to evolve and it's going to be working more with the community or is it something that's kind of reaching a stable point and more going to be just minor uh, changes? Like, wh where, where do you see... So it's interesting, going? it's funny because as you kept saying Lisp, I, I wanted to re respond by okay. saying, you know, I don't think closure is sort of about a Lisp revolution okay. at more than it is about um, uh, uh, a way of thinking about making software uh, simpler than it has been. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really what it's about. Uh, on the flip side, um, being a Lisp, mm -hmm. it should be small, and most of the growth should come from libraries. And so that's what that's what the emphasis has been and will continue to be. You know, it's not like, it doesn't serve anyone for me to pile on features and closure and experiment right. with all kinds of stuff. Um, closure's at the bottom of a lot of people's work at this point. Mm -hmm. And so stability and and uh, and, a, and a cautious incremental rate of change is the most important thing mm -hmm. because you don't want to upset everyone who's made a decision and taken a risk to, to choose to use it. On the flip side, you don't need to keep fiddling with the Lisp because right. um, it, is, it is a small thing 
and uh, and and it is growable via libraries, and so um, that's where the community has sort of just taken off. Um, Closure's growing most in the library space, which is the which is how it, it should, should be. be. Right. Not the the core should be a, a, a stable kernel, yes, and then everybody builds around it. And when I was seeing Lisp revolution, I really should have been talking more about functional. Mm. Um, because from where I I've observed is I watch people who are adopting Lisp, excuse me, adopting Closure more in their workflow around me. I also see them picking up Emacs, and I also see them mm -hmm. dabbling more with Schema or 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 some other. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, but uh, other more esoteric languages or or different structures. Um, I'm trying to uh, say one of the the. Um, uh, the, the logic languages that I'm just drawing a blank mm -hmm. on, but uh, but it's changing the. It seems to me that people who have adopted closure either the way they adopt closure helps them experience things in a new way, or they're already prone to experimenting, and closures help them make a, a leap from a, a strictly OO style of programming. I, I do think it's more in the people than than closure changing people. Mm -hmm. I think that. It's attracted people that are interested in ideas and that want to, um, you know, move forward, uh, want to investigate functional programming, want to have better tools for managing concurrency, and 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 want to use it in their day job. Uh, but I, I think, um, you know, I've never actively marketed it, um, you know, with with resources or not. Right. I've never sold closure. Um, I've just talked about what it is, mm -hmm. and and let the people. Uh, with whom those ideas resonated um, show up and and that's what's been great because you know you didn't twist anybody's arm to right. use it and you don't have to keep convincing them it's like these people have chosen to be here and I think that's why they're so enthusiastic because it's a, it's a self selecting yeah and and uh, and there uh, I, I I'm most impressed by the community being a community that values ideas mm -hmm. um, and you see it in the conferences it's not a lot of you know like how do you do X or how do you do Y or here's a new thing, you know, and here's the details of the thing. Um, there are a lot of talks about ideas and a lot of uh, a lot of investigation, for instance, of logic languages mm -hmm. and core logic is an important part of uh, of closure. And uh, and yeah, so that's been that's been really great. I think it does attract people who are um, interested. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a, it's it's a useful gateway drug a little bit of getting people a chance to break away from preset notions of how to write programs, exposing them to new ideas, and then saying, okay, wow, I've already seen that I can do something useful that's different than what I'm used to doing. Now let's go check out some more stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of breaks that ice. Right. You know, like I was saying, that I, I know Vim users who are now completely dedicated to <laughs> using Emacs because they started to do closure, and then they became comfortable with the parentheses. Mm -hmm. So then they started to dig into uh, Emacs Lisp. So they're starting to, to change all their, their their workflows there and uh, it's been kind of interesting watching these individuals as they as they as they make their migrations yeah to new ideas I think we are uh, you know I think we are in the in the second phase of the kinds of users that we have and that certainly the early couple of years were people who fundamentally were interested in some core aspect of it either mm -hmm. functional programming or Lisp um, and now we are seeing people who just see someone that they respect being enthusiastic about it, and for whom the entire thing is new, right. both the the parentheses, the Lisp, the functional macros, like the whole thing is new, and they um, they are really taking on something that's novel and a lot of new ideas, and um, managing that second phase growth is something that the entire community needs to do because now the educational burden of closure is is much bigger right. uh, when somebody's got sort of none of the you know, it, it frequently you'd say of closure, maybe it's got four components to it, and most of the people who came to it knew two or maybe even three of those, right. and now we're getting people who have one or maybe zero, and um, so they need the community to help them get up to speed on sort of almost all of the aspects of closure. You know, we have people using closure who've never used a JVM or a Lisp or a functional programming language or Emacs. Right. You know, so that's like a lot of novelty. It, yeah, uh, it's a lot of new. It, 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 what you just said was. In my experience coming, I, I have a .NET background, mm -hmm. and then it's been hard enough for me to get onto Vim and Ruby and all that. And then I'm watching the people that I work with already moving on to Closure, mm -hmm. and then they've got a whole new tool chain that 
I don't know, you know, from the ground up. Uh, and, and that's maybe, uh, you know, I'd like to uh, kind of ask you a closing closing question is, for people who are just completely new, there's just so many resources out there. Some of them are getting a little long in the tooth, uh, you know, some blog posts are outdated mm-hmm. and stuff. But is there, what would you recommend for somebody who's just saying, I want to learn closure? You know, what, what, what do you recommend a, a, a certain workflow or a tool or which IDE? What, what would you recommend for somebody getting started if they were saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing? Uh-huh. Uh, again, it depends a lot on what their background is. I certainly would say to investigate some of the books. There are a bunch of great books out now. A lot of the early books are in their second editions and have had revisions. So most of the books are current. Um, and uh, you know, if you can get an opportunity to browse through them at a conference or at a bookstore or something like that, and get a feel for it, I would pick sort of two that are in different spaces. And you can you know talk on the mailing list or an IRC for recommendations. Um, that's a great way to start, and then absolutely, you know, getting in touch with the community early right. is super important. You get on the mailing list, hop on the IRC, and uh, you know, just let people know you're starting out. And you know, uh, but everybody will have a different set of needs. You know, their mm-hmm. editor experience might be different, um, their background might be different, and what they're looking to accomplish might be different, mm-hmm. which would also sort of shape. The answer. So I don't think there's sort of a universal answer okay. to, to getting started. Um, but engage the community. Yeah. It, it just try to reach out. And, yeah, and people will have plenty of advice, sure, for that. And that's why I said I do think that this next phase of growth mm-hmm. is on the community. Um, even when I started with Clojure, I mean, I didn't have time, for instance, to explain a lot of the list aspects. Right. So a lot of the early adopters either had to know that or sort of get that on their own because I, mm-hmm. I just was trying to tell the story of how closure was unique and couldn't right. ta- tell the story of Lisp and sort of fundamentals of some of it. And uh, and now, you know, the scope for somebody who knows nothing is bigger still, so um, that's where the community comes in. And, and they're already there. They're there right. with a bunch of supportive tools and alternative documentation sites and, and uh, you know, uh, examples and... and uh, columns. Yeah, and all kinds of exercises. and. Things like that, right? So there's a lot of different things, and you pick what you know makes sense to you. And uh, but um, I'm quite proud of the community and and, and how well they are um, receiving the newcomers and uh, and being positive and helping them, you know, succeed. Great. Well, thank you very much for sure. taking the time to sit down. My pleasure.